Now today's project, I'm going to do a fundamentals of wood turning video, specifically on making a screw chuck. But first, I want to show you a project that I'm going to be working on kind of in the long term. This is going to take me a while to accomplish this, and I'm going to make a video out of it. Let me give you a close-up of this particular burl. Now it may be a video or two down the road that I upload this particular project. What I have here is just a section of log that really has some nice figure and I suspect these are um, indications of bird's eye going through this log. It's covered with these so the log itself is going to be awesome and I'll probably do a hollow form out of the log. Now, an added bonus to this piece of wood is this particular burl right here. And I've got something in mind for this, but I'm going to leave that to future videos. So you might just comment, give me a recommendation on what you do with this particular little burl here. It's maybe eight inches across. It's nice and round. And I'll slice that off and we'll do a project with this. Let's go on to the screw chuck. At the very end of this video, you'll see me turn the bottom part of this little bowl on my screw chuck. And there is the screw chuck that I'm going to make in this video. So stay tuned. Now the topic of this particular video is making a screw chuck. Let me show you a couple screw chucks I have that are um, manufactured. This is a very nice one. I got this from Craft Supplies as I often get many of my wood turning accessories. It's a, a dedicated screw chuck. It fits my inch and a quarter spindle on two of my lathes. And once in a while, I don't want this entire length of screw I don't need that much on some projects, so I'll put a washer or a spacer in there to shorten the screws. And here's another one, and that's probably all I need for some projects. It fits my inch and a quarter spindle on two of my lathes. And once in a while, I don't want this entire length of screw, I don't need that much on some projects, so I'll put a washer or a spacer in there to shorten the screws. And here's another one. And that's probably all I need for some projects. Now I believe with most every chuck I've bought, I've gotten a, a screw that simply tightens into the inside where the jaws are. So that fits right in here. And you can use that as a screw chuck. It works very well. Now if you choose to do such a project, you need to select a screw. And I would maybe look at a, a lag screw like this with real heavy threads. For this project, I'm going to use a screw thread that came with one of my chucks. It's nice and long. And this is the piece of wood I'm going to put it in. Now I've got this block of wood chucked up into one of my screw chucks. And I think this is a beel. So I'm going to put that in there, take it to a, one of the lathes, and make that round. And I'm going to use that center hole all through the project to make sure I'm centered up. Well, I'm going to continue with my screw chuck video, making a screw chuck. I did a little bit of research uh, on YouTube to see what's out there. There's a few things on YouTube on making a screw chuck, but I'm going to maybe throw in a few things that I didn't see. Let's uh, readjust the camera and uh, we'll get to work on our screw chuck. Now here's the faceplate I'm going to use for this project. And I'm going to have this screw chuck to be a dedicated screw chuck. That means I'm going to just keep this faceplate on there permanently. I need to round up this piece of wood uh, with that diameter or a little bit larger, hopefully a little bit larger. Now one thing I'm going to show you that maybe I haven't done a lot in the past. Uh, I didn't take the corners off this. This is a small piece of wood. I've got that in that very small screw chuck without the tailstock, so I hope it holds. 
but I'm going to just take the corners off with uh, maybe a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. And I've got my lathe set to about 1130 or thereabouts. And I'm going to be turning left handed so I stay out of the line of fire. Now I have my flute open to about 45 degrees and I'm doing a simple push cut. Although I'm simply doing it backwards with my left hand, that allows me to stay out of the way of the shavings and if anything flies off this piece of wood, I won't be in the way to catch it with my face. But I'm using my face shield and here I'm adjusting the uh, tool rest to be a little bit closer. You don't want to be hanging out there too far. Now I have my piece of wood securely fastened to my faceplate and I've got that chucked up into my Powermatic and the first thing I need to do is establish a really true center hole for my screw. Now what I'm going to be using to establish that center hole right there and then I'm going to drill it out so I'm going to just do part of that with this tool right here I got this from Grizzly Industrial and I need to find that part in the catalog and I'll put a note up there. It's some sort of a countersink and I've got two or three different sizes. They're very inexpensive and the nice thing about this is it's very short. I'll put that in my chuck. So I've got that tightened up into my Jacobs chuck. I'm going to get that uh, close. And I'm sure the hole I have in there is not centered. So what this is going to do, it's going to establish a little bit of a, a V groove in there that I can put a twist drill and line it up with that. I'm only drilling at about 300 RPM. I don't need to be going real fast. Now I'm advancing that very slowly, so I get a nice true center hole in that. So I think that's all I need. I'm going to put a drill bit in there and drill my hole. Now I've sized the diameter of my screw and I've gone one size smaller and what I've ended up with is a 3 8 inch drill bit and I've selected uh, the newest bit I could find and hopefully that'll center up nicely so here we go I'm going to get that in position okay oftentimes when you're drilling with a drill bit in a Jacobs chuck chucked up into the tailstock you get a little bit of movement in that bit and that's what I was trying to avoid and so far it looks really good so I'm going to turn the lathe back on get a, just a little bit of movement there it's probably as good as I'm going to get it and I'm going to go all the way through with this drill Now I'm ready for the next operation. Let me make one more point here. I've got a very small router bit. And that's just a little bit of a V cutting bit. That would also work to establish that center for your drill bit. So now here's my screw. I've got that uh, pinched in little pair of vice grips and I'm going to tap that hole but I'm going to go from the wrong end. And one thing I've discovered from thread chasing is I can, I can chase threads or I can tap a hole all the way through and on the other side it will work from that direction. Now this is going to be a lot easier to do it here than where I've got the faceplate. And I don't want to take the faceplate off. Now keep in mind I'm not going to have my lathe running lock the headstock 
So I'm going to just center that, get it started. I do plan on uh, setting this in there with epoxy, but these threads will really help a lot. I don't have a very deep thread, so that's as far as I can go. We'll back that out. Okay, I didn't want to do it, but I had to take my faceplate off there. So I've got a recess that I established before that I didn't really show you. So a lot of that's going to sit down below there. So I'll put my little vice grip back on there. And aha, uh -huh, those threads seem to be matching up, which is a very good little technique. Now I had made a screw chuck many years ago. And the problem I had with that is once I had that screw embedded in the wood, it worked for a while, but then it stripped out and it just spun. So um, I think putting some epoxy in here is very important for this process. Now what I'm going to do, I don't want epoxy on the front of my threads. I want it back here. So that's where I'm going to put that. And I don't want to put it in my hole to begin with or I'll have the same problem. There we go. And I've got my piece of wood clamped up into uh, a clamp. I'll we'll thread that in there. I think my threads work really well. I think I got the right size. Well, here's my completed screw chuck. And I'm very happy with the results. Let me turn my lathe on. It's running fairly true. It's a little bit off, but uh, it's homemade, so it'll get the job done. I'm, uh, I'm gonna just put something up here and do a little bit of turning. Now what I've done is I've reduced the thickness of this so that more of the screw threads would stick out. And I can always put a washer on that to shorten the threads. Just lock my spindle down. I've got a little piece of wood here. It's a, got some nice burl figure in it. Thread that in. Now this is really uneven. It's going to be a good test of my, my screw chuck. I'm going to use a fairly large bowl gouge. And I'm going to just take this down very carefully. Put my face shield on. Well, after all, this is a video about making a screw chuck and not about turning. So I'm speeding this up, doing a little bit of a push cut right here, and then maybe a draw cut, taking off some of the waste from this. Very out of balance. Uh, box elder burl. Now I'm working my way around the corner. A little push cut. Now I was getting a little bit of slippage on my thread. I used a drill bit that was a little bit too big, so next time I'll have to reduce the diameter of that. I brought my tailstock up for a little bit of support, which isn't a bad idea because now I'll have a center point on that to reverse chuck this little bowl later on. So I'll just do a little bit more turning on this and uh, I'll say goodbye and thank you for watching.